Oui. What's wrong? Oh, we're back. We're back. I'm sorry. We're back. I'm Dan Hunt, and this is Up Close and Personal. Sorry about that false start. We are live from the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada at World CryptoCon 2019. My guest is William Quigley. He's the co-founder of Wax. Thank William, you. thank you for being here with us. Now, you know what? You were a speaker earlier today. Yep. Tell me about what you let, let's start right there what let's talk about what we were just talking about and what did you speak on today well it could seem like an esoteric topic but it was governance governance how blockchains should be managed by the community by the community by the community not the alphabet R right all, agencies yeah not all the federal agencies but we we call it blockchain governance but it just means all right, if we need to change the blockchain, who should be allowed to change it? But of course, it gets a little bit pedantic because who should be allowed to make a recommendation that we should change it and so forth. So there is a, uh, a body of knowledge we're starting to acquire around how to govern blockchains. You know, in a regular big company, the board of directors sort of decides what to do, right? but blockchains are not centralized. So how do you get the community to do it? And uh, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's quite puzzling. The, the knee-jerk reaction is to say if you own, if you have a bunch of Bitcoin, then you should be allowed to decide what happens to Bitcoin. But uh, that may lead to perverse consequences where People decide they don't want to use it if the biggest guy makes all the rules. Right. So we're evolving from Bitcoin to Ethereum to other groups. We've been evolving at WAX, different kind of uh, governance models. Uh, it's, um, I have great respect for the people who wrote the Constitution of the United States. It's a tough thing to create a workable governance model. You know, it, it's funny that you bring that up because one of my guests earlier today talked about Satoshi's white paper, and he compared it to the Constitution of the United States. It's a new way to, to look at our money system. Do you yeah. see that that is the, the thought process behind Yeah, I that? do. I think just, I mean, the, the con United States Constitution is, is probably the, the greatest, you know, three or four page document ever made to think that it still is the algorithm for running 25% right. of global GDP, right? It's an amazing thing. But um, uh, the Satoshi White Paper had its elements of brilliance. I won't, I won't say it's equal to the US Constitution, but it's elements of brilliance around checks and balances. Tell me about WAX. What, what is WAX? So WAX is a, is a blockchain. And uh, you know, years ago, I would hear people say, well, they're, which blockchain is gonna win? And it reminded me back in the early days of the internet, like which website's gonna win? As right. though there should be one, right? Well, um, uh, in blockchain, like anything else humans do, uh, we get to uh, use cases. There are use cases uh, that abound in blockchain and sometimes the use case requires a distinct new blockchain. For what we were trying to do, that was the case. Uh, if for no other reason is we need and we wanted everyday consumers, average Joes, to be able to use a blockchain. It's very hard to use a blockchain. Yes. Right? So our thinking was we can't ask people to use the Bitcoin blockchain, even the Ethereum blockchain. It's very hard to use. You know, my wife Patty and I, we travel around the world trying to teach people about cryptocurrency. And we like to say that we take people from kindergarten the people that are asking what's a wallet yeah. to 12th grade so they have a bit of education so if they choose to get involved in cryptocurrency that's a good start for them yeah, yeah. how else are you seeing people getting started into cryptocurrency generally everybody gets started because somebody gives them a crypto right i've always seen it everything's theoretical and then you get a crypto and then you start looking at it. It's like your first pet is a goldfish. Right. Not sure what to do with it, but it's kind of neat. It's there. <laughs> it looks at you. 
Uh, I think being able to easily give people crypto and then they start to use it and then they see, wow, this is really cool. That's the beginning. But even today to give people crypto requires a lot of brain damage. You know, do you have a wallet, a private key, a public key? Here's how long it takes to send it. You have to pay fees to send it. All of those things are friction in, right. in crypto. Right. So, but, but definitely you can, it's like uh, you want to play baseball, but all you ever do is hang out in batting cages. Right. No matter how long you're in a batting cage, it's not the same as getting up on the plate, plate right? right? It's not and the same. And getting scared of that ball. So uh, you, you, I tell everybody who's interested in crypto, before you do a whole heck of a lot, just here is you know, some crypto that I'm going to give you. Do something with it. Right. And then you start to you go down the rabbit hole. You know, and a lot of people ask that question when we have our question and action section. What can I do with crypto? What can I do with Bitcoin? And, you know, the answer is really a lot. In, yep. in today's environment, you can do a lot. So, you know, I mean, Patty and I have actually traveled around the world and paid for everything in crypto. And we did it just because we could say we did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we bought our airline tickets. We paid for our hotels. We paid for all of our meals, all with crypto. Yeah. So it, it's possible. It's out there. It's part of the world. Yeah. But the way I would answer that is this. It's um, uh, most people, when they evaluate something, they evaluate it from their perspective. Right. Right. And it took me decades as a venture capitalist to figure out that that was a bad idea. To evaluate something from my perspective only means I'm going to miss a shit ton that I don't know about, right? Exactly. So when it comes to crypto, one of the first things I heard when we did Tether, which was uh, we tokenized the U.S. dollar. Right. The first thing I heard is, but look, uh, I mean, isn't aren't dollars already digitized? Can't they already move fast? What's the value of a stupid Tether? And I'm like, well, see, for you, Mr. Privileged Person, it does move fast. And for you, it's not hard to get digital dollars. But for many people in the world, they can't. And if you can't, a permissionless system that allows you to enjoy all the benefits of modern capitalism and finance right. without the uh, big bad boogeyman saying you can't do it is a, is a very powerful thing. So there are many, many use cases for crypto. There are often things where nobody really thinks about it because they're not one of the people who are locked out. But if you're locked out of something, you would love it. If you're in a supply chain, a gigantic supply chain, and you're one little player in a giant supply chain, and it would really benefit for you to know what is being changed in this product from the time I send it out, because if it goes into a store and something bad happens, and they start pointing fingers at me, I want to say transparently, here's all the fingerprints exactly. of other people who touched it. You can't do that today without a blockchain. Right. We're just, and in fact, you can't really do that today with the blockchain because it's not yet rolled out. But uh, I believe there's a handful of, uh, of things you can do with the blockchain. In fact, I often say the blockchain is the worst possible way to do just about everything. But the four or five things you can do with it, you can't do it with any other technology on earth. And supply chain clearly one of the big ones. Now, you know, you are one of the, the early people. You, you've in, invented or your company's invented Tether. You have Wax that you're working with right now. Um, wh what about the, the people, and I listened to a lecture yesterday that say, well, the blockchain is going to get too big and it, it, it's already out of date. I would say, um, uh, probably going back to my venture capital roots, uh, uh, if you are looking at a blockchain as a piece of technology, you are looking at it in a very, very limited way. Blockchain okay. is an intellectual concept, okay. is what it is. It's a concept. It's a concept of allowing for something that everybody can touch, everybody can change, and yet stays perfect and accurate all the time. That's the magic that Satoshi Nakamoto did with a Bitcoin, at least initially. So is our blockchains going to be out of date? Absolutely. All technologies go out of date, but the underlying concept isn't. It would be a little bit like saying, but William, you know, this, this 
concept of capitalism, market-based capitalism, isn't that out of date? Well, there are products that are out of date. Right. Maybe you would prefer Amazon over Sears or, you know, PayPal over Western Union. Well, yeah. But the, the idea is what blockchain is about. And, and, and you know, you said Amazon over Sears, and, and that's what a, a, a good analogy for people that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, because Sears used to be the place that most everybody got everything. Everything. Your tools, your appliances, your, your laundry, you know, your clothes. Right. Uh, and and I, I called it our second mortgage. <laughs> well, they so, were, remember, they owned Dean Witter. That's right. They did own so Dean Witter. So it was a financial supermarket. But today, the products that run through places like Amazon and Costco, it, the, the numbers are astronomical. Yeah, they the are. The numbers are astronomical. And, and Amazon, quietly behind the scenes, is building a transportation system for product that's going to far surpass the post office or FedEx or UPS. Yes. So, you, you know, is all of that, a Amazon says anyway, that they're based in blockchain? I, I'm sure they have blockchain based technology. Remember, blockchain is pervasive, it is a methodology or a concept, right. it's a way of doing something. You can program in 50 different languages to build a blockchain. So it's not technology centric. Right. It starts with the conceptual framework, which is how do I transact with other humans without ever needing to trust them? That's the overarching okay. concept. And then how do I transact with humans to trade virtual items in a video game, stuff I do? How do I transact with humans to give them derivatives of a US dollar, that's Tether, or get them to use a smart contract where there's a digital escrow agent, and that digital escrow agent, he or the software says, you did your end of the bargain, you did your end of the bargain, I am now gonna give the buyer what he wanted and the seller what he wanted. So all of these concepts can exist on blockchains, and it's one of the reasons why getting your arms around blockchain can be a little bit Challenging, challenging because it does so many things but this is why we call it a trust engine you know I, I look at your resume I look at your bio I listened to you this morning and you know a, a, a venture capitalist you took several companies public yeah. you brought tether to the marketplace and pushed those things together what is the secret to the success that you have as you have gone through your life no secret, uh, it's, it's very simple. Being very curious about new things, okay. when they come out as fast as possible, and then try to figure out where is this a far superior solution to what else is out there. That's how my partners and I do it. We try to find things that are superior solutions. And by the way, generally speaking, new stuff is not superior. Most new stuff sucks. It really does. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a, so you can't be wed to it, but that's what we do. For every one thing that sticks, we have 10 things that didn't work. But uh, I am um, often appalled at how many people, even many people in business, almost refuse to be curious. Right. They're like, I don't want to know about that. When I, my partners and I started the first consumer internet venture capital firm. And there were so many people who said to us, but you know, this technology doesn't work, and all these problems, and I'm like, today it doesn't work well. You know, the browsers were crappy, there was no payment mechanism, that's the reason we invested in PayPal. There was no way to actually pay people on it. But if there was one thing it did really well, which was it allowed you to communicate with anyone else on earth instantly. Yes. And we said that's the core foundation that's gonna make this thing great. And it's taken many decades, but it's pretty good, right? Blockchain, by the way, exact same thing. Initially, if you judge blockchain by today, by what internet is today, it's an unfair comparison. Blockchain is new. It doesn't do all the things well. It's hard to use for regular people. Right. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's clumsy, it's slow. Those are all fixable problems. When people criticize blockchain, I always say, the only difference between you and me, because I accept every criticism you say is valid, the only difference is 
The length of time, I'm evaluating it. My horizon is farther than yours. So, to give that analogy that, that you just put out there, the internet in 1980 was a very difficult place to play. Yeah. A very Few people difficult. in universities clicking away with command line interfaces. Exactly, exactly. And today, you just click a button and you're on Facebook. A two-year-old can get a smartphone and play with it. Yeah. Right. They, they know exactly what they're looking for yeah. with a smartphone. Yeah. And, and blockchain is kind of in that same it place, is. maybe 1980, yeah. with the, the command lines and only the bigger companies are using them. And everybody's saying, but what's this really going to be used for? Right. I remember the very same thing. My partners and I had an incubator, the first incubator for internet companies. And we just threw stuff out there. Some stuff worked. Net zero, we gave people free dial-up internet in exchange for loading up a toolbar and getting an ad. People were like, advertising? Why would anyone want to advertise on the internet, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it's such a crappy interface. And we were like, today. But, but always say, yes, today. But guys, look where it's going to go. Look where it's going to go. I remember, and I don't know when it was, but that first time I hit a buy button on the internet to buy something. It was like, I, do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? Absolutely. By the way, very true. Just like the first time I was sending a crypto, a Bitcoin, and because a Bitcoin is immutable, right? once you send it, you can't get it back. Man, I was checking every digit. Yep. Right? That was one of the first things. Whenever I look at um, uh, the consumer space, you know, I spent a lot of time at Disney. And, and the, the thing that Disney does really well is it, it, is it fixates on the consumer experience. And when we find problems with the consumer experience, we try to address them. And so I, I, I feel, I, I sit there and I go, how am I feeling about this experience? And the crypto experience was a scary one because right. there's very few things in life we do where once you do it, you, you can't unring the bell. You can't unring sending a Bitcoin from one account to another. So you send it to the wrong person, unless they're really nice, you don't have it anymore. Right, right. So that's an area, by the way, which will be for at least the next 10 years. There will be massive amounts of work being done to make blockchains accessible to everybody. And what a lot of people say is, by that, by that time, when we know it's done well, you'll be using a blockchain and have no idea that you are. You know, in, in 2017, when crypto or Bitcoin went up, you know, it had this run way up Crazy. to almost $20,000. It took forever to get a transaction through. That's true. Now it's taking... Uh, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, if, if, yeah. if that. Yeah. Um, what's the difference? Is, is, is that problem fixed? No, not at all. Uh, well, there, there's, uh, there's uh, other technologies. Uh, there's a concept called Lightning, which is helping to make it faster. You know, it's, it's an appendage onto, onto Bitcoin. So uh, that's why I say don't look at the technology and say, oh, well, that can't scale. No, but we can morph it, right? Even the underlying Bitcoin code it's getting updated all the time. Right. The Bitcoin code of 2017 is not the Bitcoin code of today, right? It's being updated. So, but the way it's mostly being solved is through new chains altogether. For instance, the Wax chain, we send something and it gets to you not in uh, 10 minutes, but in one half of a second, right? And during the time you're talking about, the cost of sending a Bitcoin transaction went up to Thirty, forty dollars. Right during right? that time, it was crazy. Which means, can you send a ten dollar transaction if it costs thirty or forty? No. no. So all the promise of Bitcoin, which was micro payments, couldn't happen. Even today, it's a dollar. It, it ranges over the last six months. It's probably ranged from fifty cents to four dollars. Right. But micro transactions, you know, ten cents to read this this article somebody wrote is not possible on Bitcoin. And so other chains are going to do that. We, we charge zero for the transaction, right? So to me, that was, it was kind of like our analogy was the internet and we wanted it to be like an email. It's like you, you ostensibly are paying nothing. You know, there's other things you have to do, but the transactions are, are free or near free. So that for sure, I don't make too many predictions, but that's one. If any chain that has transactions that are free or near free is going to survive and those that have not just fees, but fees that change every 10 minutes. Right. It's the variability of the fee. Like Ethereum for a long time was 20 cents. Then it went to 10 cents, 
and it went to $10 because the way Ethereum clears, when, when there are too many people on the Ethereum network, um, they use what, what uh, Uber does, they call it surge pricing. So they just say, <coughs> okay, Excuse me. it's extremely expensive right now if you want to do a transaction, and therefore, uh, fewer people will do it, the network will be less congested. I don't think surge pricing is a good methodology. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move into another area real quick here. You spent time at Disney as an executive, right? Yep. Um, I spent time as Disney as, as a talent. Oh, no kidding. But huh. the time I spent at Disney changed my thought process. And I, it was because the way they approached everything was a little bit different. And they were very, very insistent on their processes being used. Tell me about your time in Disney. And I'm trying to be nice and political about it. <laughs> so tell me about your time at Disney and how did that affect you as you moved forward in life? Yeah, well, uh, 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 I'll be a little politically incorrect too. We used to call it uh, Mouse Witch. Uh, or duck owl. In, 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 in my side of it, in the talent side, it's never work for the mouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, 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 what I loved about it was the degree of professionalism was amazing. Yes. You know, it was, it, it's, uh, uh, it was like uh, the best investment banks or the best consulting firms, McKinsey or Goldman Sachs. It's like, if it needs to get done, you'll do it no matter what. Like, uh, uh, corporate cultures have changed a lot since. Yes, People are like, oh, have. I need to go home. But uh, I love that about it. Uh, though, you know, a few too many 16-hour days, probably what I didn't like about it so much. But what I loved was the desire for excellence in everything, particularly around the consumer experience. I loved that. And that really has stayed with me over many, many years since I've left. That, that Disney was always thinking about what we call guests, but how the consumer is going to experience this. And exactly. it's not acceptable for anything to be shoddy. Every aspect of the experience has to be A1. It's a very, very high bar to, to, to actually live by, and most companies can't. But uh, to have been exposed to it is very useful. Yes. Because you realize, all right, now I see what can be done if you really decide excellence is the only way we're going to be. You know, it, it, it's funny, checking into this hotel this week, um, I actually made the comment, and it's almost coined in the industry, the, the forward-facing people here at the Cosmopolitan, I, I, I said to my wife, they're almost trained like Disney because they are so over nice and they're so over taking care of you and they're making sure that everything is exactly right. They, they did it very, very well. The, yeah, the thing, of, I'll give you one experience of that. So I worked for a while at the Disney store, you know, the retail chain. The retail chain, yeah. And, you know, uh, one day my boss said, uh, report to this store in, in Glendale, California. Uh, I said, well, okay, what do you want to do? I, I, uh, I was in like the, the back office area, right? They're like, you're going to go and be a greeter. And so I was <laughs> at the front for like a week, right? just greeting people. And, uh, 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 and then I came back and all of these rules I'd been writing for the store personnel, I suddenly had a different perspective on. That's right. After one week with them, I was like, oh my God, I've been such a loser. The things I'm asking them to do don't make sense, right? So. That should have been common sense, but I was probably too young and I didn't appreciate it. But, but I try to do the same sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I love, anytime we've got people who join our company, I want them to work in customer service for some period of time. Because when you hear the problems, then when you're out building things to make those problems go away, you, you, it's emotionally a real thing. Yes. You're like, oh, I remember these customers calling being, being really upset. Right, it's not just a theoretical problem, and I and I really picked that up from Disney. You know, it, it, it's really just summing up everything that we've talked about: a change of perspective. You know, blockchain, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is a change of perspective. Yes, just like we're. But talking I will Disney. say a, a change of perspective, uh, probably further than any other technology I've been involved with, because yes. the first time somebody said to me. It was my, my partner who brought me into crypto, and, and he said, so this is about um, 
uh, eliminating the need for trust in transactions. I just went like, but aren't all transactions based on some element of trust? Uh, yeah. And 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 he was like, you just you just got to go into it and understand it and feel it, and. That is, uh, that is one reason why crypto takes a while for people to get, because it's very conceptual. Right, it is. Once you get it, then you're like, wow, the things we can do. And so we haven't even begun to, uh, to, uh, to educate all the entrepreneurs about the real fundamental values of a blockchain. But as those people start thinking natively in blockchain, then you're going to see things that never existed before that can only exist in blockchain. Uh, like, by the way, Priceline. Priceline couldn't right. have existed without an internet. Right. You know, a marketplace for perishable goods. Th when you get to that level of thinking with the new technology, then you know it's really going to blossom. You know, William, it has been great talking to you today. Here at uh, World CryptoCon 2019, we're in Las Vegas. Just real quick, tell me, what about this event? Is, is this? I was here last year, and because crypto had been going down, down, down in price, it was more of a somber mood. You can really feel very yes. different this year. The energy People you are feel really it. pumped. Also, there's a lot of real solutions now. Yes. People were building last year, and now they're starting to release what they built. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you. truly, I, I have a new perspective on everything right now as well. I'm Dan Hunt for Up Close and Personal, saying have a great rest of today and an even better day tomorrow. Awesome.